hello, hello, federal employees. Welcome back to another great episode with me, your host, Dallin Haas. Today we're going to talk about how in retirement you can stretch your retirement dollars as far as possible. And this strategy isn't talked about as often as I think it probably should be because it can make a huge, huge difference. And that is where you live in retirement. And what I'm talking about is in within the United States, which states should you be living in in retirement to get the most bang for your buck from your retirement income? And of course, I very well understand that this is not the only reason why you should move to a state. Often if there's, let's say, there's kids in one state, or there's other reasons, or you like to travel, there's all kinds of hosts of reasons for living in different spots. But if you know also the tax ramifications and the financial ramifications of living in different spots, it can make a huge, huge difference in your retirement so that maybe let's say you live in one state, well, that dollar is now worth a dollar 20 or maybe you live in another state another state and that dollar is now worth a dollar or maybe only 80 cents or 85 cents or 90 cents whatever it is there are differences depending on where you live and it will affect your retirement so without further ado let's dig right in so there are as my regular listeners very well know three main sources of retirement income for you as FERS federal employees the first is your pension Okay, your pension is very, very critical. The next is your social security. Both of those together are your fixed income. Okay, the third is your TSP or your investments, right? Maybe some of you have IRAs. Some of you might also have other retirement. Let's say a military retirement, maybe a VA disability. There's other income that you might have, maybe rental income. But the three main incomes that you will have from your federal job is your pension, social security, and your TSP. So during this video, I'm going to go over the states that are the most tax friendly towards those three types of income. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is Social Security. The good news is, well, I guess, let's start with the bad news. The bad news is many people I talk to are often surprised when they find out that Social Security is going to be taxed at all. They're like, what? I paid in the system for a long time. Why do I have to pay taxes on these benefits? Well, that's just the rules. <laughs> I, I don't have a better explanation. That's just how it is set up as of today, is that if you make over certain amounts, you up to 85% of your social security benefits are taxable on the federal level, okay? That is the federal level now, right? Today we're talking about the state level. The good news is, right, I just talked about the bad news, right? It is taxable for most federal employees on the federal level. The good news is that most states actually don't tax Social Security. There's only a handful that do, and I'm going to read them off here. Okay, we got Colorado, and these states, I repeat, do tax Social, social Security in one way or another. They all kind of do it in different ways, but they all tax Social Security in one way or another. Okay, first state is Colorado. Next is Connecticut. Next, Kansas. Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, North Dakota, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, and West Virginia. So that's a total of 13 states that are going to tax your Social Security to some degree. Others more so than others. If you are living in or planning to live in one of those states, just Google it. Say, hey, you know, what is the tax on Social Security in these areas? And you could definitely find out. Okay, so that's the first thing. Your Social Security is if you live in a place that is taxable in at the state level, then of course you want to put that into your retirement projection so that you take that into consideration when running your retirement numbers. Next, your pension. Okay, so there are a number of states that don't have an income tax. And if your state does not have an income tax, then most likely, of course, then your pension is not going to be taxable. So we're going to dig into, there's 14 of these states that don't, pa don't tax pensions, retirement pensions. Let's dig right in. They are Alaska. So again, I repeat, these states do not tax pensions. The last list of states I just I named are those that do tax Social Security. This list is of states that don't tax 
intentions. Okay, let's dig in. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, Wyoming, New Hampshire, Alabama, Illinois, Hawaii, Mississippi, and Pennsylvania. Those are the 14 states that won't tax your pension. So that can make a huge, huge difference. Because, like I've talked about before, your pension on the federal level is going to be taxable. At least the vast majority of it. So, knowing on the state side whether that's going to be taxable for you or not is huge. It makes a big difference. Alright, now to the last type of retirement income that you are most likely going to have, and that is taking money out of your TSP. Now, if you have money in, of course, the Roth TSP, taking that out in retirement comes out tax-free, which is a huge, huge benefit. And the Roth TSP is becoming more and more popular, which is awesome. But again, the vast, vast majority of federal employees have the vast majority of their money in the traditional TSP at this point. And so it's going to be taxable when you pull that money out on the federal level, at least, and then in some states on a state level as well. But the good news is there are some states that do not tax your distribution from the TSP or IRAs other, or other retirement accounts. And let me go over. There's 12. There's 12 to be exact. And if you listen closely, they, there's a ton of overlap between the list I'm about to read and the last list I read. If you want to get all these, all these states and more information, just go to the article that I wrote about this. It's in the description below. It'll have the whole article and it'll all be there in writing. So you can actually go back and reference it, all that good stuff. Okay, without further ado, these are the states that will not tax when you pull money out of your TSP. Again, on the federal level, most of the time it will be taxable, assuming it's the traditional TSP, but on the state level, these are the 12 states that won't tax your TSP just distributions. And they are Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, Wyoming, Illinois, Mississippi, and Pennsylvania. So those are the states that do not tax your TSP distribu distribution. So consider maybe one of those states, but before you get up and move, okay, before you get up and say, hey, we're moving to Texas or we're moving to Florida, make sure that you understand the entire situation, okay? Just like anyone's financial life or entire life, there's generally a, a more than one thing going on. And when it comes to taxes and states, this is true. Tax, states have three main ways to levy taxes. First, income taxes, what, what we've been talking about today. Income taxes, when you make money, so your retirement income, they can tax that, or they can do sales taxes, or they can do property taxes, or a mixture of all three. So, when you move to a state, some states don't, let's say, have an income tax. There's, I think, nine or ten that don't tax income at all. But, they may have a higher than average property tax, or a higher than average sales tax. And so, depending on what your retirement's going to look like, just understand where you're going to be living and the ramifications of being there. Because I don't have enough time in the day to talk about every single location and the exact tax situation. And, and for example, some places just cost a lot more to live there. So maybe the taxes are really low, but the cost of living is so high there. So that it's not a clean cut conversation. There's lots of things to think about, but the reason I bring this up is so that you have it in the back of your brain. So when you're planning for retirement, you say, hey, obviously we want to find a place that we love living, but why not also find a place that you love living that has low taxes? That is the great combination to stretch your TSP money, your retirement money as long as possible. But again, if you're about to retire, if you're trying to find that place, look at it from a number of different ways, whether it's income taxes, whether it's sales tax, property tax, and where's your family? Let's say you want to visit your family. You don't want to live in a place super, super far because it's going to cost you to travel back, right? You have to look at the big picture and never focus on one specific thing or you're going to miss it, right? You got to look at the big picture. You got to step out once in a while to see, okay, what makes the most sense for you? Okay, I hope that was helpful. Have an incredible rest of your day and I'll see you next time.